In this video, we're going to go over how to use CompUI and Animate Diff and use a text to vid workflow to have an unlimited amount of frames to make something like this. If you would be so kind and like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff, that would be amazing. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you haven't already watched my tutorial or somebody else's tutorial on how to install CompUI on your computer, I recommend that you go do that first and then come back to this because I will not be going over how to do that in this video. Now, we have, what we're gonna do is there's gonna be a link in the description below to my website and you can just go ahead and grab this image. Just go ahead, do a write, save image as, and download it to your computer. Then you're going to bring up Compi and load that up. And you're just going to go ahead and drag and drop that image into Comfy and it will overwrite that workflow. Now, if you run into some red boxes, then make sure to go to your manager in Comfy, go to install missing nodes and go ahead and install anything that shows up. And then you'll restart Comfy. But before you restart Comfy, we have to do one more thing. And that is specifically we need to get these animation motion modules. And so you're gonna go ahead and download those. And then you're going to go where Comfy is installed on your computer. You're gonna to go to Comfy UI. You're going to go to custom nodes. You get then to animate diff evolved and then to models. And this is where those motion models will live. Now we have some other models. We have the motion LORAs and those are very different. They can basically allow you to pan your camera up, down, left, right, different areas, but that's not what we're gonna be playing with today. So now what we're gonna do is once you have those installed, you can go ahead and restart Comfy. And now we have this workflow and we're going to, I'm gonna walk it, you know, walk you through it, how it all works. So to start, we have our number of frames. When I am testing, I like to use 20 frames to test because we do not have a preview window with anime diff. And so it makes it difficult to know if it's gonna work or not. So this way I can test and really get my style down for what I'm looking for. Then we have our height and width, and those will go into the empty light and big batch, and that'll go to the case sampler. We also have our checkpoints. I'm using Nagajala right here, and I do really like this checkpoint, but really whatever checkpoint works for you is gonna be great. And we have our VAE. Now we have our prompt. So what I have here is we have our pretext and our app text and we have our prompt schedule. So basically what this means is pretext is everything that's in this box is gonna go before the prompt and everything for the app text for everything that's in this box is, box is gonna go after the prompt. And this just allows us to keep it cleaner looking and just looks a lot nicer. Now I always put the max frames to the same as 20 here as I do up here the reason being is before when I've loaded this in like a vid to vid, if I had like 400 frames, it would do those frames, but then I would only get 20 at the end. So it would, you know, it would get rid of 425 frames or whatever, and it would just be wasting for no reason. So I always match those when I'm trying to do that sort of stuff. We also have um, our negative prompt down here as well. The most important thing with batch prompt schedule to remember, you need to have a minimum of two prompts in order for this to work. Now they can be the exact same prompt and that's fine, but you will get an it will throw an error if you try to use just one prompt. So if you wanna have just like the same look, just do two prompts and you'll be fine. And of course, just make sure that when you are ending on your last prompt, you do not have a comma at the end here as it will throw an error and ask for a delimiter. Once we have that and we have our animate diff nodes here, Generally, 16 is what you're gonna keep it at. It's just how the technology is right now. You try to go higher. I've never been able to get it to work. It just gives me random colors and like a shape here or two, and it's just nonsensical. We have our loaders here, and these are the different models that we can use. And we can just stick with this one. It works fine, but feel free to play around with the other ones and contrast and compare. Now we're into our case sampler, the model going to animate diff, 
positive and negative prompts. Our latent image is up here. And then our seed is down here. Okay. And this is where it will be. What I like to do a lot of the time is I will keep this on randomize until I get something that is close to what I like when it comes to the, to the movement. Because sometimes, you know, we can't really control anime diff that well. So sometimes they might like get super close to the camera or have a weird transition. And so I like to use this to get me close. And then once I find something I like, then I'll set it to fix and I'll play within that and try to keep that motion the same because you can, you can't use, there's a little bit of wiggle room that you can play with. And then that will go through and then that will go into your outputs here. I always like to try to keep it in a frame of 15 and I always try to make it an H.264 MP4. The reason being is that then if I want to use interpolation, I can increase the amount of frames instead of 15, I can make it 30 and it's still going to be the same length. And I find that really useful if I want a smoother video and I won't have to waste as much time waiting for a 30 frame rate video. Now, what is really interesting is what we have right here is we have the upscale section and we're upscaling with latents. Okay. You can see right here that everything right now is bypassed. And I, and the reason that I do that is I want to make sure that my output here is good before I upscale because upscale takes a while. So I don't want to wait in the upscale and then like, is it good enough? Like, yes, I can see it here, but I'd much rather just, you know, batch run 10 to 20 of these and then check those once they're done. Like if I go to sleep and then have upscales, I'm not even going to use. It just doesn't make sense. Now, once you do find something that you like, what you can do then is you can right click here and then you can do set group nodes to always and it will bring these back. If you ever want to, you know, get rid of them, you can set it to never and it's going to hide them like that. But what I like to do is, because I don't really use never, is I will highlight them all and then just do a control B and that will bypass all of those nodes. And so that works really great that way. I'm going to bring these back, control B again. Now, when it comes to upscaling, generally you can keep the schedulers and stuff the same down here. Um, the difference being the denoise is going to be different. I found that 0.5 actually works really well. And surprisingly, like upscaling with latent can work if you have it in the right setup. I didn't get it to work very well with vid to vid but with text to vid, it works great. And what you're gonna see on the screen right now is an output that was without upscaling and then one what was one output that is with upscaling. And you can definitely see the difference in the detail and how much better that looks. So let's run the prompt, but before we do that, I wanna make sure I bypass everything in the upscale because I don't know if I'm gonna get what I want. So I'm gonna just shift and left click and then you can right click and bypass as well. Though this is the longer way when I could have just done a control B. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and run the prompt. It's gonna go into the case sampler here and it went through really quick. Generally, this green box is gonna show you where that is happening. And while that's loading, I am going to show you where these end up. So if you go to where your Comfy UI is installed, Click on Comp UI, I'm going to go to Output. And then you're going to see, if I scroll down a little bit here, where I've been making these. And these are always going to show up here. There is an MP4 file and the PNG for the workflow. And this will be done in a moment. And I don't think there's really anything huge more that you want to do. If you want to, like, add in your own control nets or add in some LoRa's, you can do that really easily by either A, double clicking and you know you can look for a loader. So if you wanna add in a LoRa loader, you can do that and connect them. Or a really cool trick you can do is say, you find another workflow and you like what it is, but you can't find that specific node. You can just do a control C and then control V onto this workflow and it will copy that over. And that's really, really nice. And so we have this little monkey dude here. And if I liked that, then I'd be like, okay, cool. Let's go to fixed and run that again. And we, we no longer bypass these. We control B and then we go ahead and run it. And then it will make a higher quality version. And that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe. If you got comments, drop them down at the bottom in a little comment box thing. And I hope to see you in the next video.